You know, speaking of uh, changes and keeping up with the times, Dan Lanning, Oregon Ducks, uh, Pac-12 is dead. Don't know if everybody knows that. And the official move is happening this year as both as both Oregon, Washington, USC and UCLA are slated to move into the Big Ten this year, which means a dramatic change in the travel. But also next month, yikes! officially become members. Get the patches on the jerseys even. Look at that. Field lo- on field logos. Wow, the whole gonna, shebang. It's going to be weird to see the Big Ten logo. On I saw fields. a recruiting photo of a Cal recruit with an ACC logo. On the patch? It was weird. Yeah. It looks. He's doing the whole. USC uh, and dress Oregon thing. were both doing that with their their logo, the, the, the looks odd. logos. And it looks very strange. Seeing it on the field is going to look really weird. Yep. Speaking of seeing it on the field, the Oregon Ducks and how they look on the field might look very different, according to Dan Lanning. Ultimately, in my opinion, you know, winning football is winning football, and it starts in the trenches. And that's, you know, you have to be big up front. You have to be able to win on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I don't think that formula changes, but like what we're doing right now in the office is truly studying some of those opponents that we're going to be seeing next year. Yeah. And you want to start to incorporate what are the things that you might have to do that are different for those opponents and not install those the week of the game, right? Right. You want to start to prepare for those in fall camp. Uh, So there might be a package here or two that we have to carry. That's a little bit different for some of the teams we'll face, but ultimately what's going to win games is us playing our best ball. Um, And that, that formula hasn't changed regardless of where, what conference you're in or who you're playing. That, yeah, I mean, that was when he was on the herd with Mm -hmm. the herd yesterday. And look, I, I think when you, a lot of people are being like, Oh, what does this mean? Whether it is the cold weather games that you're going to have in November when you go to Ann Arbor and when you go to Camp Randall uh, for Wisconsin and Michigan. But I, I think of it as stylistically football is so much different and it's so regionalized. And in the Pac-12, you know, there was a, it was offensive heavy. Right. And the kind of the the great thing about teams that were dominant in, in the Pac-12 10 era is that. They stepped it up on the defensive side of the football. And obviously we saw, you know, Washington's defense was much improved last year and they had dudes at every level of the field and they ended up being conference champions and going and playing for a national title last year. USC in their heyday and their big run, they had defensive dudes every single level. You had NFL caliber talent. Oregon, their two runs in the national title games that they had. They were not highly coveted recruits largely, but they had NFL players at every single level of their defense. And we've seen obviously with Dan Lanning, his priority as a coach is to recruit very well on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. I think what you're, when you hear Lanning say that in stylistically, the differences that we're going to be seeing, I think you can look back to what we saw in the spring game and albeit a small portion of what we saw in the spring game is when you saw a quarterback, I don't know, going under center (laughs) a few times. Oh, right. Adding, you know, the tight end personnel and the recruiting uptick that we've seen at tight end. When he says you win in the trenches on both sides of the football at in, when you're winning at high levels, because at the end of the day, football is football. Dudes win, right? But schematically, what you have to be ready for is you can't go out and expect when you go into, you know, Ann Arbor on November 2nd to be going four wide and we're just going to whip the ball around the field, right? You've got to be able to play condensed because the elements and the opponent both dictate that. If you are going to be playing against the Michigans and the Wisconsin's, Iowa's of, of college football on a consistent basis, you've got to be ready to get into that phone booth and be comfortable with that. And as you look at what will change with Oregon as you move forward, cold weather, being in the gun, not as conducive, you, maybe we do see a little bit more of guys going under center mm-hmm. at Oregon. You see the quarterback under center and turning around, handing the ball off because it does change your angles not for your blocking, for your running backs, and what you have the ability to do off play action when you do want to take those shots deep. That The pro style, when you see that, yeah. you don't see just Aaron Rodgers, even when he was in Green Bay, right, just sitting back in the gun. He was comfortable, more comfortable in the gun. We know that about Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers. But playing under center... Which he did at Cal under Tedford. You have got to do in cold weather. Mm -hmm. And so I think that may be kind of what we see is stylistically changing with Oregon as you move to a conference. You don't think of it as this full sale change to what you do, and it won't be. It won't be. Oregon won't change who they are, and Will Stein won't change what his offense is at its core, but you have to be ready 
to play an alternative style because the teams will dictate it because Michigan, Ohio State, they've recruited at a ridiculously mm-hmm. high level. Iowa, what they do defensively in the when they eventually do go to Beat Iowa City. Beat the hell out of you. When you do go up to Wisconsin, even though offensively they may try to spread it out a little mm-hmm. bit more this year, defensively, you're going to have to play in a phone booth and be ready for when the elements force you yeah. to go, not go from the gun and go under center and play a little bit more downhill football. Post October road games in the in the Big Ten, unless you're staying on the West Coast, are going to be extremely more prohibitive with with, with how you can play. We could talk about be a bite. We we could talk about playing in Oregon. We could talk about playing in Washington. Like oh, they have experience playing in cold. No, you don't. Like unless you're playing in Utah in, in late November, you don't yeah. have experience with that and cold. Look, the the temperature isn't as big of a deal because of what they have on benches now and in sure you know it's the wind sitting there it is i think that when you see you know the la schools or the arizona schools when they have problems (laughs) going up into the pacific northwest it's precipitation on top of that that chill and that's why I'm not. The I, I really matter. No, no. When you have a guy sitting there with his little <laughs> wand sprayer spraying your punt <sighs> returners down, that doesn't matter. That's bad. But what you, I, I, I think that I don't think I honestly don't believe the cold is going to be this major factor. I think it's more the style of play. I think the cold in will. those elements because both teams have to play in it. Right? Still, I I think, I think in when you're going to places like Wisconsin, Northwestern, uh, Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, those in uh, actually and Iowa, hell Nebraska too, when if it's cold enough, those places can get to levels of cold that nowhere on the West Coast is used to. Absolutely, and they live in it, and that's it does it does matter. It was it was always very interesting when I was stationed in North Dakota. There was like, oh, you know, everybody they play this from around here in the cold, I'm like. No, it's a different kind of cold here. And even like you get a couple uh, early season games that might be outdoor mm-hmm. and, oh, it, you know, it's 12 degrees one day. You see it. it. It hits hard and you're sitting there going, yeah, this is a different kind of cold. And no, I, I, and I'm not talking about yeah. like 12 degrees. Majority of those games it's aren't not, it's that. Not gonna, no, we it's not going to happen that, that often. And it no. doesn't matter when it gets that cold and you're playing in it. No matter who you are, no matter how used to being in New York, when you hit somebody, it sucks. It does, but we I mean we've seen this also it in the NFL. This sucks. Is, look at Miami and Kansas City. Yeah, one one team was significantly more used to that weather. Yeah, and it it does bear out. But yes, the precipitation, and if it does, heaven forbid, it snows. As much as we're like, oh, snow game, awesome. That kind of impact is real yeah. because those teams, they are built for that. Because look at the quarterback play that's come out of the Big Ten for the last 20 years. And it's that's not, it's it's more predicated on, again, yeah. that pro style, not driving and, the ball down the field. And I, I do think that we, we have seen a lot of the Pac 12 teams go up, in, you know, whether it's Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, going to Pullman late in the year mm-hmm. and, and getting it snatched. But that is also like, I mean, it hasn't been the the L.A. schools, the Arizona schools. They have the issue yes. going up there. It hasn't been as dramatic of a factor. No, it's, as, there's a limiting factor some for of the sure. One, so hundred percent, and that's where I, I think this is going to be. It's going to be a fun change, and there's definitely going to be more games where it's going to be cold. I think stylistically, what you may see is Oregon playing to the style of their opponents, because we say it all the time, right? Styles make fights, and that is where you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, whether that is under center in cold weather. And it's it, it's kind of a refreshing thing to hear Landing say, this is our approach and this is how we're attacking it right now, whether it's X's and O's wise, whether it is the familiarity with the areas. And I know this, that for they have gone out, like in one thing that the Big Ten has always kind of preached is that, they welcomed all the new schools with, with open arms. Mm-hmm. They've gone out and they've done like months ago the the pre scouting of where you go, where you stay, what what mm-hmm. catering companies, how what your transportation to and from all the areas. This has been done almost a year in advance of the actual games being that, played. Yeah, that way it's understood and known. It's it, it's a brand new world mm-hmm. that 
all four of the West Coast it's, schools it's that all are different from what they because in the past you know where you're staying, you know who you're going through, yep. you know who's getting your meals, you know who's running security, like all of those things that are familiar that have been passed down from one staff to another or one AD to another. Those relationships yep. that exist, they're all brand new. You you brought up the USC Texas 05 game and how insanely loaded that was defensively and what it was. Twenty eight NFL players. <laughs> On defense alone between those two teams. 16 for USC, 12 a lot, for Texas. A lot of a lot of guys in the offenses stole the show in that game. Good Lord. I, I remember it being a big number on just the defensive side alone, but I did not think it was 28. Yeah. That's yeah. That's bonkers. The, there's a lot of NFL talent, both sides of the ball. Good both Lord. teams. Crazy. And if you flip I think I think the total was 46, if I remember right. 46 total players from that game. <laughs> the NFL. <laughs> Nuts. Yeah. So uh a little crazy. 